grew up like twins, 10 months apart. So that was my better half. Um, and uh, I miss my brother a great deal. Still, I miss him. Well, a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is where a certain portion of the heart is enlarged and it, it can create certain things. But, but one thing it can create is an obstruction to the blood flow. And so the obstruction of the blood flow can cause systemic symptoms like passing out or it can interfere with the blood flow to the heart. Like let's say if you exercise very intensely and when you exercise very intensely then that's when the obstruction occurs and so the heart muscle is not getting enough blood flow so it actually gets damaged so the heart can become disease slowly over time gets people can have enlarged bigger hearts and there's there's one version that's the athletic heart studies shown that um, the strength athletes like power lifters say they'll develop a thickened muscle in their heart, the left ventricle. The, the left side of the heart pumps to the whole body. So that's the strongest part of the heart. And these athletes can have that thickened, but they're not at increased risk for sudden death either. Even though their heart might be considered abnormal, they're not at increased risk. So this hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is an abnormal growth, but it's in a certain area of the heart, it's not the whole heart. Seven, you may be odd-sized for the NBA. That doesn't bother me because I have a heart the size of a lion, any lion, and I'm just going to go in there and try to be competitive and score points any way they come. It's so hard to pick these people out before it happens, and that's why it's such a tragedy, is there is not a good way to for sure determine who has this problem with their heart. If an athlete has a history of, oh, uh, last year when I was playing basketball, I passed out. Or last month when playing basketball, I felt chest pain and I was short of breath. Then we would look more deeply and you can identify the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy many times with an electrocardiogram, which is a simple electrical test of the heart, but it's not routinely done on every athlete. So we rely on a history of symptoms or a family history because these things are genetic. If your father died when he was 35 playing soccer, then we would probably do an echocardiogram on that. Now the echocardiogram is where you look at the heart with the sound waves and that's the best way to diagnose the HCM, the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Now, I think in Italy, where they've done some extensive studies of, of these problems, I, I believe they do a, an echocardiogram on every athlete. You know, their country has just decided, you know, we're going to, you know, make the investment to make the echocardiogram available for every potential athlete. And that would save some lives. In, in the United States, they've decided that it wouldn't, save enough lives to make it cost effective um, because of the cost of an echocardiogram, have a cardiologist read it, um, having the you know manpower available to do an echo on every single athlete. Because if you think about how many athletes at all the levels from elementary school, and it's interesting with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the younger you are, if you have that disease, the more likely it's going to affect you. Or more likely going to have sudden death. So it's interesting that the younger athletes are actually more at risk uh, as far as having a bad outcome if you have that disorder. So you do a cardiac catheterization, the side effect of that procedure, you know, one percent or a half a percent die. So you do, do that in the athlete, he dies. So he died because you did the test. And so you kill a certain number by doing a test and you save a certain number. So you got to add it up and you know, who's going to fund those studies, you know, it's a difficult thing. So, 
smarter people than me have to decide, you know, whether we're not doing more harm than good by doing the testing. But hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is the most common cause of athletic sudden death. So, you know, it makes sense that, you know, every once in a while you're going to get an athlete that has that problem. But I think it would be reasonable to do the echocardiogram because the echocardiogram shows you the disease. So it's not going to lead you on to more and more procedures. Whereas the, is the EKG, that's abnormal in athletes quite often. So you're going to have all these people, suddenly you're going to worry about them. And most of them, probably 99% of them, have nothing wrong with them. But that 1% you don't want to miss, so you're going to do all these tests to be sure that it, you, you don't have the 1%. And it wastes all these resources and maybe puts the patient at risk. Well, I felt the warm sensation starting from my feet and going all the way up to my head. And as I raised up to shoot the free throw, I felt it coming on. So I pretty much tried to get rid of the basketball and break my fall. And I was able to do that to some degree. And uh, I landed on my shoulder. And I guess I was out, you know, on my way down for about one or two seconds. It just happened. A split second. <laughs>